All right, we good? Um, yeah, I was doing audio this morning with some other stuff, so everything changes. Anyway, we are back. Um, good to go. So, hope everybody's doing well. Um, hopefully, people have finished PA2 at this point. Um, I have not checked to see how many entries are available, but, um, you know, I'll download tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, so make sure your stuff is there and I'm listed as a reporter and so on. Um, to get maximal points. All right, any questions? Yes, I was in a giant wind chamber, but, but I turned off the main fan, so it's better. All right, well, let me start by going through um, PA3, which is posted. Um, let's talk through the details of that, and then um, let's go into some other stuff like generics and print writers and all that sort of stuff. So let's, um, let's hop into PA3. So um, PA3 is going to work with decision trees. Decision trees are a type of binary tree, um, but they're not binary search trees. Okay, so each, each um, node has exactly two children, so they're always complete. Um, and we're going to use this to play a version of 20 questions. So if you're not familiar with the 20 questions game, basically, one person thinks of something, an item, an animal, something like that, and then the other person gets to ask only yes-no questions. And based on the answers and the questions they ask, they try to figure out what this person is thinking of. Okay. Um, and, and it's a, a simple game to play. It's a simple game to code, and you can actually code it so that it learns, so that it gets better the more you play it. And so you, you, you can buy these little, um, you know, plastic toys that play this game for you. And they're remarkably good, right? You think of some obscure item, like an ice cream truck, right? And within 20 guesses, it'll figure out, you know, you're thinking of an ice cream truck. It's amazing. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's a fun program to code up. Okay, so um, let's talk about the details. So I'm going to describe a lot of information here that is not written. I'm going to close my window because it's noisy. Well, that didn't help much, did it? It's chop saw on metal day in the parking lot, so... Um, background noise. All right, so lots of details we'll go through here that you won't necessarily find in writing, so um, it's good that you're here. All right, so this is a 20-question game. We're not restricting to 20 questions, okay? You can ask as long as it takes until you get to an answer. Um, the way the game is played, the computer is trying to guess what the person is thinking of. So you're going to think of an object, the computer is going to ask you questions, you're going to say yes or no, and it's going to work towards a conclusion. Okay, don't make, it, don't make it the other way where the computer thinks of an object, okay? You're thinking of an object, the computer's asking yes, no questions. Um, and so you're going to implement a binary tree where each node has two pieces of data, okay? Um, so, so your tree is going to look like this. It's going to have some message and um, a flag which says, is this a question or an answer? Okay, most of what's in the tree is going to be questions that the computer is going to ask. The leaf nodes are going to be answers. Okay, things that it thinks it's figured out. And on each node, we're going to have two children, one for, you know, assuming it's a question, whether the person responded yes or no. Okay, put yes on the left, no on the right. And then there's going to be another question node, and a yes, and a no, and so on. 
All right. So here's here's an example of a decision tree. Um, let's say you're thinking of an object. Okay. Our first node could be the question: um, Is it hard? And if the answer is yes, then we're going to say you must be thinking of a rock. And if the answer is no, then it will say you must be thinking of um, a feather. Okay, so with this decision tree, the computer has two possible answers it can make, and it will ask you one question. Is the thing you're thinking of hard? If you say yes, it'll say, I know what you're thinking of, you're thinking of a rock, right? And if you happen to be thinking of a rock, it's amazing, it guessed exactly what you were thinking of, okay? But you know, most likely when you start playing this, you're going to say, no, I was not thinking of a rock. Okay, so here's what it's gonna do. It's going to say, um, what were you thinking of? Okay, and you're going to say, I was thinking of a cell phone. Okay, and then it will say, please give me a question for which yes is a cell phone and no is a rock. In other words, it asks the person who's playing the game to supply a question that differentiates what the computer guessed from what you were really thinking of. And you might say, okay, a better question would be, uh, can you talk into it? And now the tree is going to get updated. This answer node is going to become a question node, which says, can you talk into it? And if the answer is yes, it's a cell phone. And if the answer is no, it's a rock. The next time you play the game, right, if you're thinking of a cell phone, it's going to be able to guess it because it's going to say, is it hard? Yes. Can you talk into it? Yes, it's a cell phone. If you're thinking of a rock, it's going to be able to guess that correctly. If you're thinking of a feather, it's not going to be able to guess that. <coughs> All right, so let's say you're thinking of a kitten. Is it hard? No. Is it a feather? No. What's a question that would differentiate a kitten from a feather? Um, is it alive? Okay, so this answer node becomes a question node, which says, is it alive? And if the answer is yes, it says you're thinking of a kitten. And if the answer is no, it says you're thinking of a feather. And it goes on, right? And the more you play this and the more different things that you challenge it with, the more this tree will grow. And in theory, the better it gets at guessing what you're thinking of. Now, with one question, we can differentiate between two things. With two questions, we can differentiate between four things. Each time we go down in the tree, right, that corresponds to another question. So if you go down n levels, you have two to the n leaf nodes, two to the n possible answers. So 20 questions, you can differentiate two to the 20th different things. 2 to the 20th, that's about a million. So you can store a million different items in this database, and you can get to exactly one of them by just asking 20 questions. Okay, that's why it's so hard to stump somebody playing this game if they're good at asking questions. Okay, so that's that's the high-level view of, of the game and the decision tree that drives it. Um, and so, so to play the game, right, you have this tree built in memory. Um, the computer says, do you want to play a game? You say yes, okay. It says, think of an object, tell me when you're ready. The user says they're ready. Start at the root of your tree, and assuming that you have children, right, this is a question, ask the question. Is it hard? And if they say yes, come down here and repeat the process. If they say no, come down there and repeat the process. Each time you move down the tree, just ask the next question. Move down based on whether the answer was yes or no. Keep going until you get to a leaf node, okay, which will be an answer node. And at that point, you can't ask any more questions, so just announce what your conclusion is. I believe you're thinking of a kitten. And if that was what they were thinking of, 
great, you, you figured out the human mind, right? If it wasn't what they were thinking of, then ask them for some help, make another branch here, right? And then you can play the game again. So that's that's the the basic setup, and it's it's a fun game to play with. Um, all right, so to play the game, begin at the root, which will be a question. Ask the question based on the user's response. Travel left or right, and repeat until you reach an answer. If the answer is correct, no action necessary. If the answer is wrong, right. Um, all right, so the initial decision tree should be read from a file, which should be called 20q uppercase q dot text. Okay. And after you reach the end of the play, if you modify the tree, you should rewrite that file with the new tree's information. So this file will grow every time that you play the game and you stump the computer. Okay. The default database is 20q.txt in whatever directory you're playing the game. Okay. Um, you can also, when you run your program, uh, say Java PA3 space and put in the name of a file and that file will be used as the name of the database okay so the default database if you just say Java PA3 is 20q.txt but you can point to a different database um, and it will it will run with that so just check your your length of your args array from your main program and if it's if it's not equal to zero take the first argument and use that as a file name instead of 20q Okay, so here's a sample um, database file. Question, is it an animal? Answer, dog. Answer, rock. Okay, so that's, that's a decision tree that looks like this. So, is it an animal? Yes is a dog. And no is a rock. Okay, and this is available on, on the Linux server. Um, so this is six lines, right? Each, each node has two lines, either a Q colon or an A colon, uppercase, followed by the question or the answer. Okay. So you want to begin by opening up your database file, ingesting the lines of this file and building your decision tree, and we'll talk about how to do that. Um, this is your tree written in pre-order, node left, right. Okay, so you can ingest it very easily if you use recursion. We'll work through that in a little while. Um, so you can do this in pieces, right? Make your binary tree class um, so that it supports a decision tree, right? So that you have um, text fields, right? You have nodes called yes and no instead of left and right. Um, and it's helpful to have a flag saying, is this node a question or an answer? You can also just check to see if you have any children, right? Um, I would like to see a narrative-driven PA with the same idea, but implement it as a dialogue tree. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, you, can, you can take this lots of places, um, and it, it starts to look impressive really quickly. Um, so, so make your binary tree class to support decision trees. Um, you can start by just hardwiring it, right? Just make a node whose, whose value is this and the question flag is set and the yes node points to another node and the no points to another, right? You can just hardwire this tree in memory with a few assignment statements and then start playing the game, right? If you want to, to work on that part of it. And you can push off the file IO till later, right? Um, but that'll let you traverse the tree, play the game, and so on. Um, so you can use uh, scanners, print writers, strings, all the stuff from Java.language, and so on. But make your own tree class. Make your own um, you know, way to ingest the file, uh, traverse the decision tree, and so on. Again, stay away from IDEs. Okay, we'll get to IDEs for the next assignment. Um, but for now, just work from the command line. Um, so implementation details, okay. Your main program, uh, your main method should be inside PA3.java, okay? And you should be able to execute it by just saying Java PA3 or Java PA3 in the name of a database, okay? 
you will be making other classes. You're definitely going to make a decision tree class. You're going to want to make a node class. I suggest putting those in their own files, right? And, and um, you know, making them work together nicely. Um, but the main method has to be in this PA3.java. And so I'm going to compile by saying Java C PA3.java, and then I'm going to run by saying Java PA3. Okay, pair of databases on the server, 20q.txt and 20q big. All right, copy these into your directory and play with them. 20q is the initial database from up here, six lines. 20q big has 40,000 lines, 20,000 questions. Okay, a former student of mine who was at UW, he had this assignment in one of his classes and had this database, and he said we were welcome to use it. So, um, so we have this, this large database available. And we'll, we'll play this game in a minute. Um, all right, so grading, right? Upload your stuff through Git, make my, a reporter, all the usual drill on that. Um, point assignments, okay. Uh, program can be downloaded and it compiles without errors, 20 points, okay? If when I run it, it does some sort of asking questions and making a guess, 10 points. Even if it's, if it's totally just coming out, um, you know, nothing to do with anything. Um, right, 10 points if it like looks like it's playing the game. Um, if it responds to the database file accordingly, right, um, going through and following the decision tree that's built from that, that's 30 points, okay? That's, that's the guts of the assignment. If you can specify a different database file, that's another 10 points. That's not hard, right? Just check your args in the very beginning. You're going to have a string called, you know, database which is going to be set to 20q.txt, just check your args, and if args length is equal to 1, set database equal to args bracket 0. Okay, it's, it's one extra line, um, but it lets me do more testing, so I really want to see that in there. So that's 10 points. Um, if it successfully updates the database file when you guess wrong, that's 15 points. Okay. That's, that's a harder piece, but it's still not too much beyond, you know, the basic gameplay. Um, and then 15 points for style. Uh, indenting consistent, um, commenting of the code, description um, of each method before the method's definition, and a description of the class. Um, in your own words, with your name. All right, submit to CSE 223PA3. All right, so uh, let's play this game. Uh, don't give away the source code to Skyrim. Someone already leaked Nintendo, right? So, well, now we know how Skyrim's written. So I have um, I have 20q.txt in here. So is it an animal? So I said it would be a dog if it is. All right. Um, so let's let's run this. So let's do Java PA3. So um, think of an object, and I'll try to guess what you're thinking of. Is it an animal? Um, yes. I think I've got it. Is it a dog? Uh, no. Okay, what were you thinking of? A cat. Okay, tell me a yes no question um, for which yes means a cat and no means a dog. Okay, um, does it meow? So yes means a cat, no means a dog. Okay, so now if we look at our file, it's bigger. Okay, it's got this new question, does it meow? And when I play it, are you thinking of an animal? Yes. Does it meow? Yes. Is it a cat? I said, uh, uh, cat. Yes. All right. Is it an animal? Yes. Does it meow? No. Um, is it a dog? So, uh, no, because I'm thinking of a cow. Um, 
Okay, what's a question for which yes means a cow and no means a dog? Um, does it say moo? All right, is it an animal? No. Is it a rock? No. What were you thinking of? A laptop? Give me a question for which yes means a laptop, no means a rock. Can you plug it in? Okay, so now our, our questions file is getting bigger, right? It has all these different questions. And it, it can do a pretty good job. So if I'm thinking of a cow, right, as an animal, yes. Uh, does it meow? No. Does it moo? Yes. Is it a cow? Yes. All right, so I can run this with 20Q big. And let's play this. Okay, so I need somebody to, to volunteer to um, think of an animal. Okay, and all right, we have a volunteer. Good. So, um, so can you turn on your microphone so that um, everybody can hear your answers? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you got an animal in mind? Yeah. All right. So can it fly? No. No. Is it a very small animal? No. Can you ride this animal? Probably not. Okay. Does it have stripes? Uh, let me check. <laughs> no. No. Curly tail? Uh, no. Does it like to chew bones? Yeah. Does it have scales? Yeah. That sounds like a dragon. Does it have two toes? Uh, no. Is it a shark native to Australia? Uh, no. That's good to hear. Is its body segmented with three claws and a four-way mouth? Uh, no. <laughs> Does it live in the ocean and attack ships and stories? No. Is it extinct? No. Does it spread out fire? No. Nope. Does it have fur? No. Is it a South American alligator-like reptile, reptilian? I guess, yeah. Can it spit kill a large animal? Ooh, um, yeah. Okay, is it a yeah. Komodo dragon, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> excellent. So that's that's pretty cool, right? It's it's not that many questions, and some of these seem pretty obscure, but it goes from can it fly down to you know actually figuring out what it is. Um, Komodo dragons are awesome creatures, by the way. Um, all right, so that's that's the idea. Um, so. Um, so that's the setup, and you're welcome to use, you know, the large database. I'll warn you, the large database, right? It's it's crowdsourced, and so it's got a lot of noise in it. Um, you you don't want to use it to tell if your code is working correctly or not. You want to work with your own small database, you know, run it through, have it fix the database at the end, and then look at the database file and see if it makes sense. Because um, this file is is huge. Right, I mean, it's 40,000 lines, and it's got lots of strange stuff in it, um, including things like Kirby and stuff like that. Um, or a prey item of Aerotone. <laughs> All right, so, um, so what else do we need to know about this? Um, so questions. We have to talk about how to actually read and write the database and how to turn it into a tree. All right, so um, we're going to write our tree in node left right order. So pre-order. 
And the reason we're doing that is so that when you're reading the file, the first thing you're going to read is the root node of a subtree. Okay, if you do left, right, left node, right, the in order that we usually do, um, you don't get to the root node until you've traversed the entire left subtree, and then you've got to figure out what to do with that. So node left, right, okay, it's got to be that way to work with these other database files. Um, so writing the tree is very straightforward, okay. Um, is it an animal? Yes, it's a dog. No, it's a rock. Okay, so how do we write that? Um, write out the root node first, and then write out the left child, and then write out the right child. And there's, you know, extra tags in between here. So a six-line file. Okay, to ingest, how do you read a node left right file? Um, make yourself a recursive function called ingest. Okay, and here's what you basically do. Um, so make a scanner, right? Read first pair of lines. Save as a new node. So this is ingest. So read the first pair of lines from the file. That's going to be this. Save that as a new node. So now we've got this node without any children. Okay, let's call this node n. Okay, and then n dot yes equals a result of a recursive call to ingest. So call your ingest process, right? Read in a binary tree from your current location in the file, which, you know, when you get to a node like this, if that's what you read in from the tree, that's all that you return. Okay, so if you're sitting right here in the file and you say ingest, you'll read a single pair of entries. You'll save that as, as your entire tree and you'll return that. This will set the yes child of n to that tree. And then do n dot no equals ingest. Okay, so we need, we need a, a check here. If it's a question, this is what we do. If it's an answer, um, set the children to no, to null. And just return that node. So open up your file, have a, a scanner object, which you're going to share, right, to, to find it outside here. Don't pass it to ingest, okay? Because um, each time that we call ingest, we want to continue from where we are in the file. We want to keep moving down the file. So read a pair of lines, save it as a node n. If it's an answer, then just set the children to null and return that node. Otherwise call ingest twice. The first return, set that what to the yes. The second return, set no equal to that, and then return n. This is almost an algorithm that works better the less you think about it, okay? Um, it's, you know, again, recursion. It's not something that, that necessarily comes naturally. Um, if you think about it from a high level, it makes sense. If you start to drill down into it, it can get kind of bizarre. Um, but if we were to treat this file, if we were to ingest this file using this approach, right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna read a root node, which is gonna say, is it an animal? So yeah, I guess I'm going in here. Um, So here's our scanner. We're going to read the first two nodes, and it's a question node. It says, is it an animal? So that's our root node. And it's going to have two children, yes and no. 
Okay, to assign the yes node a value, we're going to call our ingest method starting right here. And we're going to find a root node, which a question which says, does it meow? So that's going to be a root node. And we're going to call ingest to assign a value to the left child. So ingest is going to start with this A, it's going to see an answer node, it's going to create a single node which says um, cat. And that's what the yes node is going to be um, set to point to. And then we're going to call ingest again from this spot and it's gonna say, does it move? Well, that's a root node, right? It's a question. So it's going to become, does it move? Right, so we're assigning the no value of this. So does it move? And we're gonna call ingest again. We're going to find an answer node. So ingest is just going to return a node containing that. So the yes is going to be assigned to cow. And then we're going to call ingest again, and it's going to see an answer node. So it's just going to return that node, and that's where the node is going to come from. So that's dog. And now we're done with our call to ingest that was trying to assign a value to the no field of does it meow. And we already finished the yes field. So we've just finished the first recursive call to ingest that was assigning the yes child to is it an animal. Okay, so we have a second recursive call to make, which is to assign the no value. So we're gonna call ingest again, starting right here. And ingest is going to see a question node. So it's going to um, make that the root of a tree. So, and I already forgot what the question was. Can you plug it in? And since that's a question node, it's going to call ingest twice. The first one's going to return a single node, which becomes the yes child. So yes is a laptop. And then it'll call ingest again to assign the no child, and the no child is an answer node. So it makes a node that says rock, and it returns from that. And now we finished both recursive ingest calls in creating the children of this node. And so the ingest call to assign the no child to the original root comes back. We assign the no child to be this tree, right? The root of this tree. And now we've finished assigning both nodes for our original root node. So we just completed um, this on our first call to ingest, right? We read a pair of lines, we saved that as N. It was a question, we said, uh, yes equal to another call to ingest, no to another call to ingest. That first call to ingest is now going to return this root node. So this whole tree comes back, and guess what? We're at the end of our file. Okay, we just read the last entry in there. And if everything goes according to plan, when you finish building your tree, you will have read the last entry from your file. There should be nothing left over. You should not hit end of file beforehand. All right, I'm going to um, test this with good files, okay? Um, but I don't think I say anything about error handling in here. All right, so do reasonable error handling if the file that I specified does not exist or if 20q.txt does not exist. I say that because the compiler is going to force you to do a try catch anyway, okay? So just do something reasonable, file does not exist. But I will not test this with a corrupt file, okay? But make sure you don't generate a corrupt file, all right? 
right? So, so have some checks in there if something goes wrong, if you run out of entries, right? It will help you in debugging if you know that's what's going on. But I will only test this with good files, okay? Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, this has an odd number of lines or something like that. All right, questions about this? I'm gonna do open lab tomorrow for a couple of reasons. One, I'm hoping people will think about um, PA3 today and maybe make some initial forays into it and then work on it. But also, if you don't get PA2 turned in on time, right, you can turn it in Saturday morning for a point deduction, um, well, for a deduction of points. Um, and so, so definitely, if you're, if you're not done with PA2 tomorrow, come to open lab and let's work on it there. Okay, um, but start start kicking around PA3 in your heads and, and see what kind of progress you can make in the next 24 hours and then bring questions in to lab tomorrow. Um, all right, so let's, um, let's change gears and talk about some other stuff. So let me talk about print writers because you're going to need to write a database file. We know how to read from a file using scanners and using the file constructor. Print writers are, are super easy to use. Um, as long as we know what they're called. And I think it's Java IO, yep. So we'll import java.io.printwriter. All right, so let's construct a new print writer with, um, with an argument of haha.txt. So if we look at the print writer class, okay, um, you can construct it with the name of a file. You can construct it with a file that's constructed, you know, with a file constructor, um, and other things like output streams and writers and so on. But this is our easiest approach, right? Creates a new print writer um, with the specified file name. And once you have a print writer, what can you do? You can do print, and you can do print line, and you can do print f, and you can do all these other things that we do with system dot out dot, right, to print things into that file. So, um, so this is this is extremely satisfying to use. All right, that's all there is to it. So this will open a new file, haha.txt. It'll write one line into it, and it'll close it. But you can throw an exception, right? So we've got to put this in a try catch block. Protect the um, the construction of the print writer in a try catch block. Um, and as usual, you can't declare your output object inside the 
try catch block because it's local. So declare the print writer outside, and then you can use it inside the try catch, and you can use it outside the try catch. All right, so we've got our main Java main class. If we run main, now we've got a haha.txt that says this is a test. Okay, that's all it takes to create files. So you can construct it and open it by creating a print writer object. You can write into it with print line, print f, print, or any of the other methods that you find in the documentation. And just make sure you close it when you're done. That's what actually forces the bytes out into the file um, onto the hard drive. All right, so that's all you need to write your database file after you've updated your tree. So you can ingest with scanner and uh, has next line and next line, right? That lets you do your input. Um, and then when you've got an updated tree, um, go through it, traverse it in node left, right, recursive traverse, and for each node you hit, write the node out using um, just a print line into a print writer object. All right. We need to talk about details of how you update the tree when when you get to the end of it and you had the wrong answer. Um, and we can do that next week, but basically, you know, if you came down here and the answer was wrong, you ask for a new question, you get a new answer for yes, a new answer for no. Okay, so make a node from the yes answer, make a node from the no answer, change this to be the new question and assign the children. And then the only trick is you need to know where this node came from so that you can make this thing's right child, this new node, okay? Or you can just repurpose its, its answer and its yes and no children. So that's just housekeeping. And you might have to do a one ahead uh, while you're traveling down the tree. But other than that, um, it's fairly straightforward if you keep all the pieces lined up. All right, um, play around with that, uh, finish up PA2, get that turned in, make me a reporter, um, and um, I will see you next time. All right, have a great day.